Hi everybody! I'm here. Uh, a little late. Apologies. Uh, my book was on the other side of the room and <laughs> it had all my information in it. Um, so I will just wait to see uh, who popped in. I'll just give it a couple minutes. So I hope you're all doing well. All you replayers, those that weren't able to make it live. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, I'm here at your disposal. Um, I've had a lot of experience in this realm, so I wanted to um, come to you and give you this information because uh, this this tends to be some of the most difficult times in in the lives of us animal guardians. Um, so I wanted to address it. Uh, recently, I have uh, I've helped two cats uh, pass on, and um, I have also um, done that in other you know a while ago. I've done that, and I've also helped my own personal animals pass on um, uh, in very profound ways um, and I wanted to share my experiences with you and teach you some of the things that I have learned and hopefully they can help you uh, you know us animal lovers we go through this a lot you know animals don't have the same time you know they're only here for a blip in time uh, sometimes we can get lucky um, I have a cat out there that I've had for 18 months or 18 years sorry um, and uh, that's not necessarily the norm and uh, I, I know that um, I've only had one other cat in my entire life that lived longer so um, all right so it's been to 224 nobody's popped on yet I'm gonna start with um, with my story um, so welcome to this video event called the beauty and art of grief and transition um, I know that sounds a little uh, conflicting that there can be art and beauty and grief and transition but I promise you there is so my story um, began about 2007 I lost my my first uh, first of a lot of losses in my life um, I've had others I had one cat that I only had for like two months uh, who ate you know rat poison and uh, didn't stay with me very long but since I've been an adult on my own I have had a total of 12 cats and in 2007 um, my first cat that I rescued as an adult um, passed away at 17 and this was my first my first um, experience in a hospice type situation she had diabetes which obviously was is an easy disease for the most part you know as long as she got her insulin every day she was fine um, but then she ended up getting a uh, cancer so she was my first and I had to do things that I never had to do before with her <clears throat> I never had to deal with the cancer of an animal I never had to deal with the death of an animal um, that I've had for an extended period of time and and that started that same year um, I had other other tragedies I had uh, my own um, scare to my own life I was in a major car accident a week after 
uh, Guinevere died. And then in November, my second cat died. And that was Moondust. This was my second uh, hospice situation. She also had cancer. Guinevere had squamous cell. And Moondust had pancreat, uh, pancreatic cancer. Two entirely different cancers, two entirely different um, things to deal with. Now, granted, this is all before I started doing the work that I do now. Um, oh, we have two people now. Um, say hi, say hi. Um, oh, we got Lori. Hello, Lori. Um, so, so that was my second thing. This all happened in 2007. I also lost um, a, a dear friend of mine on my birthday of that same year. So it was like one of your car accident, sunny on my birthday, and then moon dust, um, all in 2007. 2008 rolled around and my one cat who was diagnosed with lymphatic carcinoma um, ended up passing away in February. Two weeks later, uh, one of my best friends passed away from pneumonia. And, uh, so that was like, and Sabine's cancer was a little bit different because it, it wasn't, um, an obvious cancer since it was internal. It was lymph, uh, it was, um, in his lymphatic system. So I would have a little, we have a couple of little surgeries to get, like I called them little peas, little peas of cancer out. Um, but I had to, you know, hospice care for him. And then I had a break. Um, and then 2009 rolls around and my Gabriella, who was my oldest cat at the time, she ended up, um, starting with kidney failure and she was 19. So I, I pretty much attribute it to old age, but she was the first, the first cat that, um, I had a full on hospice situation where we were giving her fluids um, at home and, uh, trying to keep her comfortable and she ended up passing away at home. And, uh, so that was my first real, like I had to be on the clock giving her fluids type thing. And then she ended up passing away in 2009, a week later, my guinea pig passed away. <laughs> so you're seeing a little bit of a pattern here. Um, and then in 2010, um, my other cat, Saki Sue, she ended up getting sick with some mysterious illness. And for about six months, uh, we were kind of trying to figure out what was wrong with her. And I kept seeing her waste away. And then all of a sudden she bumped back and she gained some weight and then she'd waste away again. Very much of a, a cancer type, uh, situation. And she ended up um, we brought her to the vet. She ended up dying in her sleep away from home. She's the only one that I was not with when they passed. Um, but that was a really, that was a struggle for me. And she is the one that um, basically started my whole transformational journey because after her death, um, I ended up um, getting laid off from work because I was late trying to take care of her. Uh, one too many times and my life changed at that point. Hence now where I am now. I was okay for 2011 and 2012. Um, it's about a year and a half. And then my Carly got sick and my Carly also had squamous cell. And that, that was a struggle, um, because she was one of those cats that wouldn't let go. Uh, she wanted to be with me all the time and she was getting her fluids and she was, um, I had to make her food. It ended up before she passed away, it ended up being, uh, six hours of my day. I was feeding her, cleaning up after her and taking care of her. It was very exhausting. She finally passed away in 2013. Um, and then her son Spike, which we got, uh, two weeks before Carly died. 
had kidney failure and I was able to keep him with energy work and um, and and good food and nutrition I was able to keep him at stage three kidney uh, kidney failure for two years and then he went into stage he it's almost like he skipped stage for four he just like went right into end um, like the end stages of kidney failure and uh, I ended up having to give him the fluids I had to I was like his human wheelchair for a while um, and uh, and then I had to go through uh, his transition uh, but he was getting energy work I had already gotten to the position where I am now and then last year uh, Carly's other son and Spike's brother got sick and we almost lost him in March he had multiple organ issues and we thought he was gonna go he was at death's door and then for some reason he bounced back and so we had a few more months and then he died the day after my birthday uh, in September and that was a that was an amazing um, it was an amazing experience for me because at the time I, I was starting to get into the animal communication and I learned from him that he wanted to do this on his own he wanted to be with us and and so we honored his wishes he got to the point where I had to do one of the treatments that I do which is the pain drain for several hours before he actually passed and knowing that I could be there for him and to give him what he wanted not what I wanted what he wanted was an extraordinary experience it connected us in a way we were always connected it, it connected us in a way that was so deep and so spiritual and it was really it was a, it was amazing it was an amazing experience as much as a mom it was hard watching him um, pass away and be in pain I knew that what I was doing is helping him and I was relieving some of that pain for him and uh, you know it was it was just it was a lot it was a lot especially because it was the day after my birthday um, and we had conversations I said you know what I, I understand you want to do this on your own um, but if if this is going on I know you're scared and I know you didn't realize it was gonna be so hard but if this continues and you want me to I will take you to the vet by like so-and-so time um, this day and he ended up leaving um, this plane uh, about 13 hours before that deadline which was kind of pretty you know satisfying as a mother like he didn't he wasn't suffering for that long it was just a couple hours um, so that is basically my extensive extensive history on going through the process of transitioning a pet the hospice the care the love the being able to um, detach myself enough where I can be the most compassionate version of me as I can for them and most of them we actually brought to the vet and we actually um, had them uh, put to sleep um, so they wouldn't suffer but the whole family was there with all of them they were not alone they did not go into a cold room with nobody that they knew they were with me and my husband and even my brother was there it was it was so touching for me to be able to do that for my pets so that is my story and my history now here's what I learned about that what I learned is number one these are actual soul beings like I hadn't been taught that I kind of knew that just 
from who I was, but I hadn't, um, I hadn't been taught that, you know, everybody around me was treating animals like property and that they're, they're, oh, that's my pet or that's this. And this is one of the reasons why I've changed my language in this group. Um, we don't own these animals and through the processes that I had to go through personally and also the animal went through as they were transitioning, it made me realize not only how connected we are on an energetic level, but how individualized we all are. You know, we may be connected. We all may be, be all made from the same stuff, but these are little soul beings. These are sentient soul beings that have emotions and wants and needs and desires that typical society doesn't think about. You know, we see, you know, how, how some of the factory farmers treat animals with such disdain and like they're not even um, energetic souls, um, which I can't watch things like that. That like literally as an animal empath that breaks my heart. Um, but that being said, I have learned so much about who these beings are. And the other thing I learned is compassionate non-attachment, which is very difficult very difficult to do by the time I was at my my final cat um, who had passed which was a Kiro um, I was able like I literally was completely there as a facilitator and not as a mom um, because that's what he needed he wanted my mom energy but he wanted somebody to support him as he did what he wanted to do. Um, so those are the things I learned. Now, I want to also find out what you want. So that's the basic story. Um, so we're gonna have some question and answer things. If you have questions, um, I will do my best to answer them. And we can figure out um, how to move forward if you are dealing with a, a grief or a loss um, and how to honor these beings as best as we can. So we have, oh, we got Angela and Vicky. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, oh gosh, yes, Vicky. I know people teach that animals don't have feelings. They don't have they, they can't feel pain. I've actually heard people say that animals can't feel pain um, and that they don't have souls, which is so, it, it, I mean, if we're all created by the same God, we all have a piece of him. So that means we all have a, a sentient consciousness within ourselves. Um, so, <clears throat> so I wanted to, I have a couple little notes, like, I don't know how long this is going to go. I wanted to tell you my story, where I, where I'm getting this from. Um, and like I said, the reason why, um, I'm bringing this up now is because I just helped a cat transition, um, just last weekend. And, um, I helped one in December and I've also noticed that other people have lost a lot of animals recently. I don't know if it's, um, some type of shifting that's going on um but there we've lo we're losing at least in my circle um i've had many friends lose um their animal companions just in the last couple months so it's been very heavily on my mind and i wanted to bring this to you because i i think that we look at grief and the transitioning of our beloved animal companions as a as a deep loss, like, like to the point where part of our soul goes with them. And that's not how it's supposed to be. We are all, we are all here, um, to have our own journey, animal, human, 
insect. It doesn't matter. Um, and yes, in insects have souls too. Um, but we're all here to achieve something. We are all here to have our own journey. And as separate soul beings, we can't attach ourselves or attach our identity to these other soul beings. It does not serve us very well and does not serve the animal very well. If that makes sense, non-attachment is an essential part of our journey here on this earth. And when it comes to our animal friends, it is very difficult for us to maintain that non-attachment because we put so much into them. You know, when we're sad, we want to snuggle with them. Um, when we have a stressful day, they relax us. There is um, this healing connection between humans and animals that has existed for eons. And it's very easy for us to attach ourselves to these beautiful creatures. Um, and when I talk about non-attachment, this is a spirituality term. And, you know, as, as a, my new title as energy, animal spirituality facilitator, <laughs> I love that term. Um, it's, uh, it, spirituality it goes very much into the beauty in art of grief and transition. It is okay to grieve. It is okay to grieve. There's nothing wrong with that. What happens and when it gets to be a problem is when we get stuck in the grief process. We're not supposed to, even when we deal with other humans, we're not supposed to get stuck in the grief process. Um, so non-attachment, this is, you know, a, a spirituality term, allows us to maintain the compassion and the loving kindness that we want to share, but also the, the separation of soul being that allows the other soul being to be on their own journey. Just as humans, other people aren't the ones to make us happy. Other people aren't the ones to fill a void in our life. The same goes for animals. Animals are not supposed to fill a void in our lives. We are stewards. We are guardians. We are friends. We are, yes, animal parents. We call ourselves parents because we do feel like they're children to us. But just as children, when they grow up, we need to let go and let them live their own lives. We also need to do that with our soul companions. Does this make sense so far? Um, I know we got three people watching. Just let me know. Is this making sense? Is this kind of getting anything? I'll, I'll wait a little bit because I know there's a delay. Um, but let me know if this is making sense. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. And uh, we can address um, any of your issues. So, um, so anything? Any questions? Just give me like a... Uh, no questions, <laughs> something, because since I'm using Ecamm Live, I don't see like the thumbs, the thumbs ups and the hearts and stuff like that. I don't see any of that stuff. Um, but if you uh, feel so inclined, hit those likes and loves, and um, that'll help the rest of the people in the group um, see the video. It'll put it at the top of the the algorithm for us. Okay, who we got? Yeah, we got Angela. Good. I'm glad that makes sense. Um, Vicki, Lori, um, does that make sense to you too? Okay, awesome. Awesome. We got Lori says yes. How about you, Vicki? <laughs> I'll wait just a second. 
she might be typing. Um, I'm doing stuff while listening. Well, good. Oh, that's, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just continue and, uh, we'll get, uh, Vicky's comment soon. So I wanted to bring up the, what happens in transition. So when our animals transition, and this is what I have experienced. Um, I don't know everything. Um, I just know what I've experienced when my animals have transitioned, they don't go anywhere really. Um, they, it's almost like they break free from their limited body. And it's like they, it's, it's like this beautiful sensation of, I'm free. Like they grow wings and they're just like, they start to soar. And I've had, most of my animals have stuck around a little bit. And I have a few that actually, when I call on them, they come back and help me in my healing sessions. They help me in my readings. Um, this is not the case for all of my animals. Um, I have two that always, my last two, my Spike and my Kiro, um, Spike is definitely a soul, um, uh, a def definitely one of my soulmates. Uh, he only was with me for two years, but even though Carly was his mother and Akira was his half brother, Spike came back to me at 12 and a half years old. And once he came, we, he was my Buddha kitty. We meditated together, um, he always had to rest himself like right on my, right here. Um, it, he wasn't a lap sitter. He like had to be across my chest and on my shoulder. Um, we had a very strong soul bond and he has taken up the, the mantle of my protector. Um, I, I had a one medium tell me that he's my security guard. Um, so <laughs> when I need protection, he's there. Akiro, um, I'm not sure, I haven't felt him lately, but he comes in periodically because there's a part of him that feels responsible. Um, I, we haven't been able to figure out why, but he will come in when he's called and he will be, um, kind of like there as an energy support for myself. Um, he showed up the other day, which was kind of cool. Um, but they don't stick around. So you know how we have like loved ones that might stick around with us when they pass. Animals don't do that because they practice non-attachment. When they're, they leave their body, they practice non-attachment. So they may come in and check in and say hi, but they need to do other things now. Some, some of them will come back in another form, in another animal form, if the cat may come back to in another cat, um, if they are your soulmate, they may come back and be a part of your um, your soul circle again. Um, but once they transition, they are because they are the the supreme level of spirituality. They don't have attachments. They love unconditionally. They serve unconditionally most animals feel like they are responsible for their um guardians so they will come in and check in but they don't have the attachment um so if you need them call them <laughs> they will come visit um but you have to sense them so that's kind of what happens in transition um they just change into a free liberated form and that form can um, come back to this this plane in some way, shape, or form. Um, they may have sole purposes like humans do, where you know we need like like for myself, I have a sole purpose of healing and teaching. It goes back several lives. It goes back um, goes through several dimensions. 
and I continue with that same purpose no matter what happens after I leave this plane. Animals kind of have the same thing. So if they have a certain job or a soul contract that they have, they may have another soul contract when they are liberated from their body. I know that's a little out there. <laughs> And that's kind of like being really woo. Um, but it's something that we need to remember that they are soul beings too. And since they have a soul being, since they are a soul being, they have a soul purpose. And that doesn't end when they leave us. So, um, so that is, uh, that's that part. Uh, is, okay. Greta, my guinea pig when I was young has come back a few times. First time she was teaching me more about my intuition and who was there. Wow. Or pet success from, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. So Greta has a sole purpose and she may end up being, since she's come back to you several times, she may be uh, a soulmate because a soulmate, you don't, we don't just have one soulmate in our lives and a soulmate does not mean um, romantic soulmate. A soulmate is somebody who helps you along your path in many soul, in the same soul circle, in different lives and different, um, forms. Um, and that's really cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, I hopefully Spike does the same. I don't know. Um, but you know, I still have a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of some etheric cores attached to my Spike and my Akiro and all my animals. But I also know that they have their own journey. So I just wanted to bring that to you about, you know, about what happens after they transition. All this information has helped me. So I wanted to share it with you and hopefully it can help you. Maybe you have some past pains, past losses that, um, has, um, affected your, your present, or maybe you have a, an animal that's sick at the moment, or it'll help you in the future. So as you know, we, as pet guardians, you know, we're going to have these experiences because we we feel like we need to have these beautiful creatures within our lives, our whole lives. We are animal stewards. You're just not an animal steward for one animal. I mean, all of us. I mean, I'm sure all of us have had many animals in our lives. Um, we are animal stewards in the grand sense, in the grand picture. Um, so hopefully that's what, now the dealing of the grief part, <clears throat> I, I wanted to bring this up just a little bit because this can also go into how we grieve about other losses, um, in other parts of our lives. Grief, as I mentioned before, it's important. It's essential. It's part of being human. It's part of our journey. Um, grief teaches us an awful lot about who we are. It teaches us about who we want to be. And it's, it's basically, it's one of our stepping stones. It's part of the human condition. We can't get away from it. So the best way to handle grief, number one is non-attachment. I've already described that. I know that's difficult. It's a practice. It needs to be something that we, um, we work toward, but we also have to do self care. We also have to realize that being stuck in a grief cycle, um, impedes our own growth. It closes our heart to the potential of another soul being coming into our lives to, you know, expand our lives for us to expand their lives. There's a, I'm not sure who said it, but there's, um, some, uh, transformational type person, uh, personal development 
uh, coach that mentions that there's a 24 hour rule. I would go a little bit further than 24 hours, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. When something happens, when you have a, uh, a loss that creates grief, you got 24 hours, grieve all you want, cry your eyes out, do whatever you need to do, get it all out. After those 20 out, 24 hours is over, it's time to pull up our bootstraps, put on a big girl and big boy pants, and we need to start to pick up the pieces to move on. The process may take a little while and we may slip and fall, which is just normal. It's like a little kid learning how to walk again. When you have a grief moment, when you have, um, when you're in grief, you're going to fall. We get upset because we're going to miss them. A lot, a lot of times our grief is because of our own um, I don't want to say selfish because it's really not selfish, but it's our own um, emptiness that causes our grief. It's not about the other person or the other being or the animal that has passed away. It's about what we're going to lose, what we miss. This is why non-attachment works because you're taking on this pain that just chips away at your soul. Grief is important, but it is not, but it is something that should be just a blip in the grand picture. Because once you have that breakdown, that cry, that, that release of, of longing and loneliness and all that stuff, it's time to put the pieces back together so we can open up our heart again to love. We are beings of love. We were made out of love. We are divine pieces of God's love. And when we sit in grief, we block that. And we need to open those doors again as soon as we can because we need to serve somebody else or some other animal. Does that make sense? I know I'm like way up here in this like whole like woo-woo thing, but does this make sense? Um, I don't want to keep, you know, going on and on and on. I have a lot, a lot of thoughts about but I want to make sure it's relevant to you um, and relevant to your experience. Um, let me see. We got Sarah. My dog will be 10 this year. She has arthritis and got worse late 2016. She was pitiful and it really started thinking of her transition. Then I didn't want it to happen and had episodes of uncontrollable tears. Hopefully she and I, are both working on it. I think you are. I think you are. Um, and since, you know, I, I did connect with, uh, Clara, I, I think, I think that's, that's definitely what's happening. <laughs> so, um, so just keep going at it and just keep realizing, um, and being there and being the compassionate human that you are and allowing her to be the compassionate being that she is and and start practice non-attachment you know you're there to support her growth or her transition or whatever just as I am with my cat tic tac I am here to support her as much as I'm going to be sad when she goes because she will be my last cat um it's like uh I'll be the close of a chapter um because I only have one now. I went from 12 to 1. Um, she'd been my last cat. My job is to support her. And knowing that. Knowing that I'm serving her. Um, it helps with that non-attachment. And by me serving my cat. Allows her to serve me in the capacity that she was meant to serve me. And that may work with you and Sierra, uh, you and Clara. 
Um, and also, you know, Lori, if you have uh, you and George and, you know, and Vicky, Daisy's, right? Daisy's name. Um, it's the same thing that happens. You have, you know, your job is to serve them and support them. And they do that to you. It's a soul, it's a soul contract, really. It's just a, a, a support system, not an attachment. Um, so that is that. And then, um, I talked about the purpose of non-attachment going forward. Um, it's really important. So as long as you can understand that our job in the relationship that we have with our animals is to support them and to serve them in their journey and vice versa, that will help um, you as you go forward into the future with anything that would come up with another loss. When you have another animal, it could be a goldfish. I've had many fish die and yes, it's really painful when you see somebody die. Um, you know, so these little soul beings it doesn't really matter. I get upset when a plant dies. Um, <laughs> I know Angela, you can relate to that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the whole message that I want to bring to you. And uh, I hope that all made a lot of sense. I hope that brought some things together for you. Um, I'm now going to open the floor to questions. So if there's any questions, um, feel free to pop them in the comment. Um, I'd love to answer some and I'll stick around for a few minutes and we'll go from there. If you have no questions, then we'll close this, um, event. I don't want to keep you too long, but I also want to make sure that all your answers are, or all your questions are answered. And, uh, you got what you came for. <laughs> so, um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, like I said, I'll stick around. Uh, if I don't see any questions in the next three minutes, uh, that will give time for the delay. Then I, I'll give it five minutes, five minutes, five minutes for Q and A. And if we get questions, then we'll just keep going. Uh, my time is pretty open. Um, so, uh, let me see. Yes, I had betas and it got easier after the first one died. I love them all. Even the ones who wouldn't eat. I know betas are awesome. I had a, I had a fish tank once, so like one of those little tiny three, three gallon ones. And I had a male beta and a female beta and I had a couple cloud tetras and I had a couple little froggies and because it wasn't a, a regulated tank, they were in my kitchen and we had a hot spell and the kitchen got really hot and they kind of cooked. My heart was broken. Oh my gosh. My heart was so broken. Um, all these little lives. And I kept trying to do what I could to save them, but I couldn't even putting in a little bit of cooler water in there. I just couldn't do it. It was just too hot, um, for them. So yeah, it was, it broke my heart <laughs> and I haven't had fish since. Um, but in these days I will, I will set it up again, <laughs> but there's a part of me is like, I want the fish to just swim. <laughs> Um, let me see. Yes, I cried when my pineapple plant passed away. I know. I had a spider plant that did the same thing. Um, but that was caused by Guinevere. Guinevere loved plants and she would pee in them. And I lost so many plants because of her. And I had this big, giant, gorgeous snake plant. And I just, no matter what I could, I couldn't save it. I couldn't save it. I was so sad. But I stayed away from plants and now I have two poinsettias that I've never, I've never, ever, ever taken care of poinsettias before. And I like, I had a, a succulent garden that died. Um, so I'm just not good at plants, but my, my poinsettias are thriving. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, they're doing their dormant thing, but I got new leaves and everything. It's like, woohoo. <laughs> That's awesome. So we got questions. Want to find Frozu the ice storm? I can't 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> he knew I was trying. Yeah. So we got, I'm, I'm waiting for questions. Anybody? I can just sit here and chat, but uh, I don't want to keep you. Um, we have three people still. I'm hoping that it's still the three. Um, if not, hello to anybody new. Um, questions, questions. I'm hearing crickets. Crickets on the questions. Am I that good? Am I that good? Did I get so much information and made you so understand everything without questions? <laughs> Man, I am good, huh? Um, yeah, so feel free. I mean, I, 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 I got, I got lots of information up here and I'd love to share it, but sometimes it's hard for me to organize it myself. So the more you guys ask questions, the more you guys, um, give me topics that you want to hear, the better I can serve you um so <clears throat> I keep watching my little thing uh, the plants adopt us too yes they do yes they do I don't know if you saw my my picture on my profile we had a you know with our storm my one tree at the bottom of my stairs it, it the snow was so heavy and oh she was just bent over I couldn't even get up my stairs because it was just all over and uh and then I took a picture today and he bounced back all the snow was off him so he bounced back to normal which was really cool really cool <laughs> well thank you Lori <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 glad I'm I'm really glad that that this helped um and, uh, I guess we got like another minute or so and then I could close it. <clears throat> so three people. So I'm assuming it's Angela, Lori, and Vicky. And that correct. Um, it's the only problem with Ecamm live is I don't, I don't know who joins. I don't know any of that stuff. I should probably turn on my iPad, which is like right over here, um, to, to see who's watching, um, but I didn't, um, but anyway, so if you have, oh yes, I did have more dude, very, yeah, he, he bounced back, um, yeah, so since we're probably going to close this, um, if you have any topics, that you want me to discuss. I know I had the poll when we first started the group and I do have those topics. Um, but if there's anything specific you ever want me to talk about, um, I can jump in and do a, uh, a video, like a quick video to answer your question. Um, I'm willing to do that. That is no problem. So you don't have to wait until like once a week at like eight, nine o'clock at night, um, <clears throat> Eastern time. Uh, so just feel free to give me ideas and anything that you're struggling with, any questions you have about your pets. If you uh, want uh, an animal read or anything like that, uh, we got the promo is still going on. We got a week left. Um, so we still have the um, that animal reading promo. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of it. That's kind of it. Um, all right. So I guess, um, no questions. I'm so good at my job. <sighs> so I will leave you for the night. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I appreciate all you replayers that joined and have stuck around this long. Thank you very much. Um, same goes for you. If you have questions, I just kicked the camera. Sorry. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to mark it a comment um of this video and i will come back tag me in it so i know it's there uh tag me in the comment and i will answer your questions um and uh i guess that's it so uh we got one more let me see yes hugs to you guys too um so have a wonderful night everybody and go give your animals cuddles and love them and tell them you honor them and you will allow them to serve you the best they can and that you will serve them the best you can support each other so have a wonderful night 
and I will see you in the group. Bye.